Hi, I'm Richard from Frozen Well. Welcome back to the seventh devlog for my game Ghost Blaster. It's been a while, and there are reasons for this which I'll explain in this devlog. You probably have seen from the title of the video that one of these is a switch from Construct 3 to the Godot game engine, so first I'll go through the reasons for this. I'd been finding the motivation to work on Ghost Blaster to becoming harder and harder, and I found myself working on anything else just to put it off. As you probably noticed, I entered quite a lot of game jams, which I realised were just a way of being productive without touching Ghost Blaster. I decided to sit down and try and work out the reasons why I wasn't wanting to work on Ghost Blaster. And after a while, I realised that it was a game engine I was using. I'll make this clear here though, that this is not a negative on Construct 3, it's just that the way I work has changed and I feel Construct no longer fills my needs. First, I'll give a bit of background so you can understand my change in working. I started making games roughly seven years ago. At that time I'd not done any coding for a number of years, and I'd never made a game at all. So when starting out I looked around for a game engine that was easy to get started with for a beginner. I tried a few game engines at that time, but Construct 2 amazed me with how quickly I could get something simple up and running using its amazing visual event system. Fast forward seven years and my life has changed massively. I've been to university and obtained a computing degree and for the last two and a half years have been employed full time as a software engineer. This has led me to become a lot more used to using code for creating things. This therefore leads me to the main reason for turning my back on Construct for this project. I now find the visual event system that I once found so good to be harder and harder to follow what I'm doing with. I've just got more accustomed to looking at code and find it easier to work with that now. I therefore decided that I wanted to try a game engine that's code based. I've previously used Unity and entered a couple of game jams using it. Most recently 80s Kid was created using Unity. I also use Unity for a couple of university projects. However, Unity has never clicked with me and therefore I discounted it straight away. The other engine I was going to consider was Godot. About 18 months ago I had to play around with it and followed a couple of basic tutorials and at the time was impressed with it. At that time though I wasn't ready to leave Construct behind. Now I feel differently, so I decided I would give it a try again. I watched a few tutorials on YouTube and then decided the best way for me to learn the basics of the engine was to think of a small game idea and have a go at making it. I looked around for a game jam that was going on at the time and used them to come up with a basic idea. I didn't get enough done to meet the jam entry deadline but continued to work on the game for another week or so until I felt I had a good basic understanding of how Godot worked. The game I created is a game inspired by ZX Spectrum game Trashman and involves you collecting bins while avoiding vehicles. By this point I was really enjoying Godot and the decision is made, I was going to use Godot for the future development of Ghost Blaster. So, I made a start on converting the work I'd already done in Construct over to Godot. The first task was to get the algorithm for creating the rooms ported over. This took me 4 or 5 evenings, but once I got this working, I knew I'd made the correct decision to swap to Godot. Seeing the algorithm in code was a lot easier to follow, and I'd made numerous performance improvements just by following what I was doing more. Here you can see the algorithm working. There's a few gaps in the tile maps which I've not completed fully, but the algorithm itself works perfectly. So going forward from this point, I need to complete a selection of basic tile maps for each of the room shapes, and then make a start on porting over the hazards that I'd previously created in Construct. So that's my plan for the next couple of weeks, I'll let you know how I get on in the next devlog. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the devlog, please hit the like and subscribe button so you can follow my progress.